world of Disney. The 101 Problems of Hercules. And now your host, Walt Disney. You know, an old sheep herder once told me that there are no critters on Earth that use their brains less than sheep, and none that use their brains more than sheep dogs. Well, he must have been talking about the three dogs in the story we're bringing you on this program. What happens to them is based on a true incident that took place in the Old West. And when you see how they handled the 101 problems they come up against, you'll understand why their story has become a sheep herding legend. In the American West of the 1870s, Buckeye Jones had about the best sheep herding outfit in the whole territory. And that was because he had carefully chosen and trained a great team of dogs. Hercules was a powerful Hungarian kuvash. Boomer was a friendly, bouncing bundle of old English sheepdog. And though Lady was only knee-high to the sagebrush, the Scottish border collie could work sheep with the best of them. Buckeye and his outfit came to the Shriner Ranch every spring. It would be their job to take a flock of sheep up into the high country for a summer of grazing. He had his own special way of doing business. The call of the bugle was a welcome sound to rancher Bill Schreiner and his wife. The old herder was strictly a loner. Being more at home with dogs and sheep than with people, Buckeye always sent Hercules down to the ranch to do the socializing. <laughs> Bill Schreiner had been Buckeye's captain in the war between the states. Hercules seemed to sense the close bond between the two men. <laughs> They're all yours now, boy. Take them away. the summer months it would be up to the dogs and the herder whether these sheep lived or died. And the flock they were taking amounted to nearly half the livestock that Schreiner owned. He wanted to be sure that his old comrade was feeling up to the job. Looks to be a good year in the high country, Buckeye. The signs have been favorable. Yep. Seems so. How was your winter? Quiet. How was your rheumatism? Who says I got that? The last time the doc was out from town, he mentioned you'd been to see him. Huh. I got as much room as that old doc's got good sense. Well, the missus thought I should ask you. You tell her not to worry, Captain, and you do the same. All right, Buckeye, I'll do that. Are we going to talk all day, or you want them sheep moved? They're all yours. And so began the long journey to the high country. For half a dozen years, it had started out this very same way. The dogs excited about working again, and the sheep headed for a summer of good eating and wooling out. But this time, the ending was to be considerably different. During the next week or so, the flock was moved far up into the towering mountains where Buckeye knew that he could find the best grazing spots. Hercules was busy all the time.
As they kept moving on, the foreman of the outfit had many duties. Boomer couldn't resist chasing rabbits. A warning from the boss would put him back on the job. Another problem for the big dog was cantankerous. It took work, but Hercules kept the outfit going. There was a special bond of respect and mutual trust between Buckeye and Hercules. Things went along quietly until one day in midsummer. Boomer was watching the flock, while the rest of the outfit was looking for a missing lamb. Hercules had an uncanny ability for finding strays. <laughs> wasn't as spry as he used to be, and maybe his rheumatism did bother him more than he cared to admit, but he'd put his life on the line for the sheep without a second thought. times like these, Buckeye was mighty sure that a herder was only as good as his dogs. Yes, sir, it took real teamwork to look after the rancher's vested interests. The pleasant summer days passed and grew shorter, but still the flock was moved from one lush grazing spot to another, many miles beyond the mountain peaks from the home ranch. bath wasn't exactly a thing of beauty, and maybe it wasn't a joy forever, but it sure felt good right now. All through the summer, the one member of the outfit that never took it easy and always stayed on duty was Hercules. It was on quiet Sunday evenings that the old herder observed a simple ceremony. In his own way, Buckeye announced to the wilderness that all was right with his world.
It was later that night that Hercules started to feel a vague uneasiness. Guy was concerned about the big dog's fretting, but puzzled because he couldn't see that anything was wrong. And then the herder suddenly realized that the weather was turning colder. Summer was just about over. Buckeye decided that he would start back for the home ranch in the morning. It was soon after dawn that Buckeye set about breaking camp. Hercules was still bothered by a growing awareness that something was in the air, something dangerous and deadly. Then it happened. rifle, his supplies, and the mule. Stealing the flock would only slow down the small band of fugitives on the run. One buck couldn't resist the temptation to pick up some provisions on the hoof. the determined lady, the renegade decided to ride her down. <laughs> the raider had his hands full as Hercules came into striking distance. A skittish horse, a struggling lamb, and a raging dog were too much for him. hurt, Lady wasn't about to give up.
For once, cantankerous straying off had been a good thing. The Indians hadn't seen the wayward mule. had overlooked something else, Buckeye's canteen and shoulder pouch. The old herder set his mind against the pain. There was no time to lose. He was more worried about the sheep than about his wound. If early snows came, the flock would perish. Getting word to Bill Schreiner was all Buckeye could think about. <laughs> Devoted dogs were left alone with the flock and a hundred and one problems. Time passed slowly in the high country. The herder had been gone for several days, but the dogs stayed right on the job. Lady's injured leg was slow to mend. Getting food became a problem, for Buckeye had always fed them. There was only one hunk of venison left in camp, but it was way out of reach. The hungry boomer decided to look elsewhere. Since Buckeye had taught the outfit to share and share alike, Boomer's bunny became community property. Far on the other side of the mountains, the lonely prospector was about to make a discovery he hadn't counted on. found was an old sheep herder, more dead than alive. So the sheep could continue to have fresh grazing lands, the dogs moved the flock on down the slope, on the opposite side of the mountain range from the Shriner Ranch. Hercules went back up to the abandoned camp to look for Buckeye, but he found something else. <coughs> The cougar had pulled the hunk of venison on up into the tree, not realizing the inviting dinner came with some strings attached. At the Shriner place, a ranch hand rode out fast for a doctor. The prospector had brought in Buckeye, and the old sheep herder was weak and unconscious. Oh. 
We'll pull him through, Bill. Don't you worry. Anything about the sheep or his dogs? Indians, that's all he said. I reckon they took care of the sheep when they put the arrow in him. I reckon. Mount up, boys. The rancher feared that early snows had already made it impossible to get into the high country, but he would send his men to try. Far up in the mountains, the first storms of the year had hit hard. Hercules was making another visit back to the camp to look for Buckeye. The dogs had instinctively driven the sheep down into the warmer foothills. Boomer and Lady were watching the flock. Could that be his master? Just one more disappointment. Hercules sensed that Buckeye would not return. He would have to get the flock home as best he could. From now on, Hercules would be on his own. The mountain storm swept down into the foothills. The injured lady was forced to take cover, leaving Boomer with a flock of restless sheep on the verge of panic and stampede. It was a sure thing that Hercules would return. But would he get there in time? Boomer took on the job of three. sheep had disappeared into the desert. There was nothing to do now but wait. On the other side of the mountain range, Bill Schreiner had sad news for Buckeye. The boys got back, Buckeye. They couldn't get through. Snow's already drifted deep in the canyons. They ran smack into a blizzard, too. We've got to face up to it sooner or later. There's no hope for the sheep, Buckeye, or the dogs, even if the Indians didn't make off with them. They didn't! I seen them! All right, all right, we'll say they didn't. But I can't send men up there to freeze to death, you know that. Then, by jingle, I'll go! You're not going anywhere. You've got a place here as long as you need it, Buckeye. It had taken several days for the three dogs to round up the scattered flock in the dust-dry desert. Hercules tried to keep the sheep moving back toward the foothills in order to find water and a safe way to the home ranch. The thirsty flock became harder and harder to drive. The dogs suffered too. The alert Hercules caught a strange scent in the stillness of the desert. Yeah. 
The big dog sensed there was danger in the stagnant water. Somehow he must stop the thirsty sheep from getting to it. The bad water hole was behind them. But the hard run had taken the last bit of strength from the suffering animals. The dogs had to keep them moving or they all would die of thirst in the desert. And then the leaders picked up a new scent on the desert air. It drew them on like a magnet. For once, the sheep had done something that made sense. They'd been following the scent of a good water hole. And at last, there was blessed relief for the exhausted flock and for the thirsty dogs. The peaceful moment was not to last very long. Hungry predators had also come to the water hole. A pack of marauding wolves. for the dogs that a pair of two-legged critters had also been looking for water. I wonder where the herder is. Couldn't be very close. Wolves don't attack with a man around. and Sam were drifting cowpokes, out of work and out of money. Something's funny here. Those dogs look all done in. Maybe they ain't got a herder. Something could have happened to him. Well, that's his problem, not mine. Sheep, sheep dogs, sheep herders, they're all no good. Let's go. Now, hold on, Sam. I ain't never liked them either. But the sheep I've come across always belong to somebody else. Now, if they was my property, and I could get a good price for them, I just might feel a little different about them. Yeah. Ought to be a lot of wool and lamb chops in that bunch, huh? That's just about what I was thinking. And if no herder shows up, those dogs just might need some help. I don't know, Mort. They're nothing but trouble. We got no place to keep them, besides. Keep them? We'll just drive them to the railhead and sell them. Come on. Let's have a look. <laughs> Well, look there, will you? We got us a herd of sheep with built-in drovers. Too easy. Something's wrong. It sure is. Right up in that hard head of yours. We've got to at least keep up with them. Those aren't just sheep out there. Those are silver dollars. Come on, Sam. The cowpokes didn't know, of course, that their built-in drovers had plans of their own. Hercules had started the flock through the foothills to circle the snow-covered mountains. The Shriner Ranch was his destination, not the railhead. But the cowpokes were sure they never had it so good. As for the dogs, having the men around meant there'd be less chance of another wolf attack. For the moment, at least, the arrangement seemed to work out for all concerned.
Toward the end of their first day together, the cowpoke set up camp where the dogs had halted the flock for the night. Come on. Here you go, boy. Here, girl. Easy, boy. Easy. Come on. Somehow, to Hercules, taking the meat from Boomer was not like taking it from a stranger. Looks like I got our crew eating right out of my hand. Yeah. Well, just make sure you don't have meat in it off. For the first time in many a day, the dogs faced a night without hunger. The next morning, things were nice and peaceful. Leastwise, they started out that way. Mort didn't know it, but Boomer was going to round up that stray anyway. Hey, Sam, there's nothing to this sheep herding business. Yeah. Hercules' homing instinct told him it was time to change direction. Hey, what are those fool dogs up to? The rail heads straight through the valley. Don't worry, we can turn them. Come on. The men tried to take over the flock. Hercules would have no part. He made his point so suddenly that Sam was taken by surprise. And so was his horse. Two men and two horses were just too much for Hercules. Sam was boiling mad, but he'd only shot to scare them off, and he sure did that. The men had chased off the wolves, but now, how could the dogs chase off the men? I told you it was too good to last. What do you mean? We can drive those sheep to the railhead without those fool dogs. Yeah, and stand guard over them all night to keep the wolves off. And mark my words, we ain't heard the last from those hounds either. We won't have any more trouble from the dogs. We scared him off for good. Sam could see into the future pretty good, but not through his hat. launched his own attack, while Hercules continued his diversionary tactics, and the cowpokes held a hurried council of war. No more trouble from the dogs, huh? Don't worry. 
I'll round up the horses. You sure will, mister. Save me some supper. And keep an eye on the sheep. The moonlight maneuvers went on into the night. Mort marched. Boomers sacked the enemy camp. Hercules made infantry out of a cavalry unit. Boomer raided the mess hall. Mort kept on marching and marching while Sam retreated to their ruined headquarters. Boomer and Lady enjoyed the spoils of the battle. And Sam knew for sure they were in for a long, hard war. In the harsh light of day, it was painfully clear that there was only one thing more miserable than a cowpoke on foot, and that was two of them. Hercules sensed disaster ahead. It appeared to be only a stretch of marshy ground, but to the dogs, it was a muddy trap for the sheep. And the cowpokes didn't even know it was there. The men still weren't shooting to kill, though Sam was sorely tempted. Handling cattle, the cowpokes knew about. Handling sheep, they had to learn the hard way. The muddy marsh gave way to the fresh water of a nearby river. The cowpokes had been forced to turn to mutton for meat. Seeing one of their flock being cooked and eaten was the last straw for the dogs. Here they come! This time, Mort and Sam were not shooting to miss. Folks clean forgot about their cook fire, but sheep fat and a nice breeze kept it going. being seen, the dogs took the long way back to the flock. Meanwhile, the mutton was getting well done, and so were the worldly possessions of the cowpokes.
get the poop. You'll never hit them from here, Sam. They're out of range. Well, maybe I'd rather use it on a no good, dirty dog that is in range. Now, Sam, boy, don't do anything you'd regret. I already done that. Listen to you. You, uh, you'd better save the ammo. You know, we haven't got much else left. We ain't got nothing else left. <laughs> While Boomer and Lady started the sheep back in the right direction, Hercules made sure that the cowpokes had unconditionally surrendered. They had. Hey, hey Sam! problems were now behind them, but there was still a long, difficult journey ahead. In the unfamiliar country, Hercules had only his homing instinct to guide him. Time passed slowly for Buckeye. Thanksgiving Day had arrived, but not for the old Hercules. The Shriner family and their neighbors had gathered for a feast and to give thanks. nearly healed, and he was determined to head for the high country. So as not to spoil things for the family, he would wait until after the holiday. He knew that he was in no shape to fight his way through heavy snows, but he didn't much care. He only knew that he had to go to look for his dogs and the sheep. And then he thought he heard something. Maybe it was only an old sheep herder's hunch, or just plain wishful thinking. But Buckeye thought he heard the far-off jingling of sheep bells.
101 problems of Hercules were now behind him. Coming that couldn't happen, did happen. about it, Lady, Boomer, and Hercules. That sheep herding outfit of Buckeye Jones was the very best.